<laughs> okay, uh, Sinadopi. Welcome to Native Wellness Institute. <laughs> Native Wellness Wednesday, Wellness Wednesday Power Hour. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm one of those Nistu uh, Nidaniko Makoyo Sakoyi. But I'm one of those rural Indians that live way out, way over there. <laughs> so welcome to Wellness Wednesday. I live way out and I'm uh, coming to you live from the Blackfeet Reservation. I'm Scott Beepy Cunny. We're, um, that's the backbone of the world right there. Uh, we call it going up to uh, Nenastico Chief Mountain. And it's a little bit uh, chilly, but uh, I've been out here since uh, sunrise. Not the entire time, but just walking around, saying prayers and um, being grateful. So I just thought I would, um, this, is how, <laughs> this is how I dress. I put on my glasses so I can see. <laughs> so welcome to Wellness Wednesday. Native Wellness Institute, we've been coming to you for three years and eight months. Oh, oh my gosh. Has it been that long? Let's see, 20. Yeah, it's been a long time, over 500 power hours. So welcome, we see Francis Pryor, uh, Norris. Welcome to Native Wellness Institute's um, power hour. And um, I thought I would... Um, visit with you because we're in a time right now where we just came from a a beautiful solstice december 21st at 7 27 uh p.m pacific time 8 27 p.m mountain time and 9 27 p.m uh central time and that uh that solstice is uh it, it more has to do with all of the universe and the stars and all of our ancestors that have become stars and we come from stars. And so that, boom, a lot of our ceremonies are kicked off all across Indian country and First Nations and Aboriginals and Maori um, and Peru, uh, the Mayans. And so we're at a really beautiful time. Um, so welcome that time, you know, welcome it into your heart. We always take it and we welcome it into our heart. How do you like my gloves? These are the best gloves because you can have your fingers out, but you can cover your fingers out so you don't get frostbite. These always remind me of, um, a friend, a now gone from Pegwis, um, Brenda Olson always wore these kind of gloves and so... <laughs> That's what we wear. But well, welcome to um, uh, Wellness Wednesday Power Hour. And today, you know, I was um, I was thinking of something Buster Yellow Kidney used to say, and I heard several of our other elders say it. And since we're in the we're in the era of something called, you know, Pan Indians, uh, pretend Indians, and fake ass Indians, <laughs> fake ass Indians that um they used to have this saying but it's i say it in a positive and a good way he he used to always say we'd be at um sundance putting up the lodge and he just said remember we're not playing indian we're living indian and so today i'd like to talk to you about living indian living indigenous living in a good way with those value systems that were given to us by our ancestors. Our ancestors gave us. Our ancestors gave us these songs. Our ancestors gave us these ceremonies. Our ancestors gave us our language. Our ancestors gave us our DNA. Our ancestors gave us our dreams. Our ancestors gave us our creation story. Our ancestors gave us respect for our elders. Our ancestors gave us to protect our children with our lives, our ancestors. And so we're not 
playing Indian or living Indian. And, geez, that just kind of warmed me up. <laughs> so I just wanted to visit with you some, with some things today about what it means to be living Indian. What it means to, to have a heart, to have compassion, to have lateral kindness, to have lateral forgiveness, to have lateral prayers for, for even what would be your enemies to pray for them at this time and to, to bring that uh, to bring that into your heart and, and live Indian. I had this really I uh, went up to Standoff, Alberta and um, my mom wanted to go and when your mom who's 85 years old wants to go and and take in, they say, take it in. You do your best to take them. And, but I, I never want to interrupt her independence. So she drove up to our hotel. And I drove, because we live in two different places on the reservation. And my sister Kathy drove with my mother. And then she can't drive at night. or It, it scares her. So, whoo! You know, I said, well, we'll just pile in my truck bomb. And we went and we went to the Horns. The annual Horn Society has a social powwow on December 25th. And that's where our family goes every year. We go every December 25th and we kick off the celebration and the festivity at Standoff. And it was be it was a beautiful celebration. It started off with four headdress transfers. Two men and two Blackfoot women. They they capture them and they they uh, sing songs over them and they paint their faces and they put stand up or flow back headdresses. It started with that ceremony. And then we don't have grand entry because it's social. So we just, they just, the drums come. There's drums from Siksikai, drums from Pikani, singers from Amskapi Pikani, both the American side and the Canadian side. And they just come together to sing for the people. And the dancers just come. It's no competition. They dance for those who cannot dance. That is living Indian to dance for those who cannot dance. And my mom always, you know, she has a bumper sticker around her license plate. And it says, if you don't dance, you grow moldy. <laughs> if you don't dance, you grow moldy. <laughs> so... Anyway, it just it was just momentous, and I I'm just so so much gratitude. That's the greatest present that I could ever receive. The greatest presence is to take my mom and to take her to the the social Powell in Standoff, Alberta. And you know they they had golden age, they had traditional, and we had our our Kami Poismanix Women's Stand Up Headdress Society did the posting dance in the four in a circle and it's a prayer dance that was done for centuries it was a prayer dance that even before the united states and before canada that dance was done it was a prayer dance and so we got to participate in that and to pray so it was a time it's a time of prayer this today the 27th is a prayer day Yesterday, the 26th was a prayer day. Going into, you know, the 28th, there'll be, you can, well, you're all welcome to come to Browning, Montana, and we'll have another social powwow of prayer. Um, Heart Butte Indian Days, you're all welcome to come, is the 29th and the 30th in Heart Butte, Montana. So everybody, everybody's welcome. Everyone can come. We're going to dance. And then at Pikani in Brockett, Alberta, we'll have uh, their January 1st. They always like to, they'll have ceremony, the posting dance. They'll have gift. There's always gift giving. Uh, we have, I guess like we have a Christmas every day when you're living Indian. 
364 days a week we have Christmas. We're always giving. And it it may not be something you got on Amazon. It may be giving of a song. It may be giving of an Indian name. It may be giving of a rite of passage. It might be an honoring, giving an honoring, a memorial. Honoring people while they're alive. We're, we're honoring a lot of our elders while they're alive. Try to honor them while they're alive. You know why? Because when you have those memorials and big funerals, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. They can't appreciate the flowers. Give them the flowers when they're alive. Honor them when they're alive because they're dead. And you're doing all that stuff. Do it. I mean, memorials, it's for the living. It's to help us accept our grief and to accept the time. So, <laughs> so it just... I'm just sharing some stuff with you. This is, there's, they're, they're just considerations of compassion and of love and things we need to do. Now, um, right behind me, right up uh, over here, over here more is what is known as the KOA. The, it's a campground. And when I moved home, 30 years ago, there was, there's been a battle for 30 years for this 53 and a half acres right here. There's been a battle uh, for the tribe to, to get it back. Um, but the owners, they were from Bozeman and they were lawyers and they've been fighting our tribe. We, their, their lease was canceled in 2008. And they just kept coming there. Um, two years ago, we seized the property. And then because it was in a court battle um, in federal court and it, it was a court battle. But just a couple weeks ago, we won. We won the land back. We won all of this land. I'm out here and I decided to come out here and to do the power hour today because we now have control and they have to pay the tribe back lease taxes of $1.7 million. So not only that, they're probably going to fight that. They're just like Trump, <laughs> but we got the land back and this is now owned by the Blackfeet tribe and it is, it's in possession on the Blackfeet tribe. Uh, reservation and it will be run by Blackfeet. I, it's um it's warming up so I don't I just uh I just keep my I'm out here it's a a little bit chilly but you know what I love it I love it I love winter you sleep better you dream better in the solstice is the time of rest our tribe gave everyone off Two weeks with pay. A lot of tribes after the pandemic, they see how hard you're working. They see how, what you have done. So they gave everyone off two weeks with pay. And so people are um, uh, making star quilts. <laughs> people are getting their, their uh, Indian clothes, beading and getting everything ready for tomorrow night. Uh, and last night at Sixty Kai was their celebration. Um, Sixty Kai and um, kind of over from Calgary and Gleeson, Alberta. So I just wanted to share with you, what does it mean to be living Indian? Living Indian, you know, uh, <laughs> I was uh, with my sisters on the dance floor there was Tish, Tish Wadsworth. Hey, Tish, if you're out there. And Annette Bruisedhead and um, Nadine Goodstriker and Charlene Prairie Chicken. There was, uh, oh, so many stand-ups. But I was teasing them because, you know, they do give gift-giving. Every dancer got some monetary payment. Every elder got monetary payment. And even the Blackfeet veterans sent up all these gifts to give to the children. So 
when Santa came in, they gave out all these gifts free to children. And, it, it, you know, there was hundreds, so they, they gave it all out. But I was just, uh, I was teasing them because I was saying, you know what, the best gift, and, and think about this, the best gift you can give is someone your smile. <laughs> the best gift, smile at people. So I was teasing them because Annette was, you know, had all the envelopes and was making fair. So the best gift you could give is smile. And so I said, Annette, everybody else, the uh, the MCs, and they're all sitting there and they got the residential school trauma look, which is like this. That's the residential poker face trauma look. It looks like this. So when you see someone looking sour, Gene Tagabon calls it looking sour, smile at them. <laughs> smile at them. Blow them a kiss. Like on reservation dog. Tighten it up. Blow them a kiss. <laughs> anyway, every time I went by, shit, they must have been talking, so when we danced by, everybody was going, smiling. MC was smiling. That Tony, Tony Delaney. Oh man, he's such a good MC. He was smiling. Wilton Good Striker smiling. They were all smiling, and they didn't have that residential school poker face. You know the face when you can't read. We're we're so frozen from our trauma, and we're so numb. You can't read their face. So. From now on, the greatest gift you could give is give someone your smile. <laughs> give them a laugh. Give them, you know, give them, tease them. They were teasing quite a bit, you know, and, and I noticed they well, they can't tease inappropriately. <laughs> they can't. They were teasing Maynard Kicking Woman. His last name is Kicking Woman. And they said, you know, Maynard, you have to change your name. Because we don't do that anymore. And like all the women, all the dancers say, yes, you can't kick women anymore. <laughs> and they were kicking up their feet. You know, you can't kick women. But I was thinking about, you know, names like Wilma Mankiller. There's a Wilma Mankiller Barbie doll now. But Wilma Mankiller, we grew up with her. And everyone, they would, after she would, they'd say, is her name really Man Killer? Does she kill men? <laughs> it's a name, you know. It's a name, and so I was just laughing to myself because they were they were saying you know inappropriate things towards women, and you can't say that anymore. You know why? Because living Indian, not playing Indian, living Indian is keeping uh, women, keeping your grandmothers, keeping your mothers keeping your daughters, keeping your sisters, even your badass aunties that are LGBTQ two-spirit. The best aunties are two-spirit. <laughs> you know why? Because those, there's, oh gosh, those two-spirit aunties will take good care of you and they'll keep a clean house and they'll keep good music and they'll keep the the dialogue sassy and spry. So, that's that's one of the things is we can't say inappropriate things um toward native women or indigenous women no no put downs and the same with men but you know i'm i'm only i'm a native woman and so living indian and so from one of the things to think about in 2024 is no matter where you go if there's little girls Native girls or any other girls of any other race, say good things to them. Tell them, geez, you're smart. Geez, you look good. Dang, you you are pretty special. You just give my heart a uplift looking at you. Say good things to young girls, teenage girls, and older girls. I'm an older girl. <laughs> 67, but I'm badass. I'll be 68 and I'll be badass. Tell them they're tell them they're smart. Tell them they're brilliant. Tell them they're creative. 
tell them they're special, tell them, uh, you know, just think about all uh, remarkable, you're brilliant. Go around and with that smile, tell people, geez, you're brilliant. Look what you've done. The, look at what you've accomplished. Look at you raised all of your children. You're brilliant. Um, I, I just... I just like that when you tell someone, God, you're brilliant. <laughs> tell them they're brilliant. Tell them they're amazing. Gene always goes, tell them they're awesome. You can wiggle your fingers. Tell them they're awesome. Awesome. Learn to, because living Indian is to uplift people. Living Indian is to, to give them... Um, encouragement always make sure your words are encouraging um you know no uh no feeling bad you know i i think a lot of times you know i i remember a young man talking to his dad who was the peyote case in native american church and um he was just a little boy and and when his dad would say you know sit still don't move around like that kind of stuff that little boy told his grandpa, he goes, Grandpa, you hurt my bad feelings. <laughs> so don't hurt anyone's bad feelings. Don't, you know, don't think of, of, of words of encouragement. I One of the things that I've witnessed in Living Indian is encouragement telling I'm really glad to see you. I'm really glad to see your accomplishments. And even if you see them on social media, commend them, congratulate them, tell them, you know, tell the encouragement, encourage you just to, to smile and to say the good words. It's it's the lateral kindness saying, oh, you're, you're such a good speaker. Those were good words, though. You're such a good singer. That was a good song. Man, that was a good dance. I just watched you. And it's like, you know, watching Michael Jackson do the moonwalk when you watch a young child get on the floor and dance and chicken dance and round dance and owl dance and rabbit dance. Tell them you're the best dancer. And remember when you're dancing for those because not everyone can get up. And and that's, you know, I, I get a tender heart because I see there was one of our, our champion chicken dancers who had um, knee surgery and he had a walker, one of those ones you push. But, you know, when they had golden age, he got out there and he was pushing his walker and he was pushing it and he was still tapping his feet. Really, he was in, in, in tune with the drum. His feet, his feet were... Well, he was still dancing because he got out there. He would probably, without that walker, boom, get him up. Boom. <laughs> Why did he just laugh when people fall down? Get him up. Boom. <laughs> but he didn't. He he had that, and he was even dancing, kind of using his his walker, and he, he was chicken dancing. And that's badass when you can chicken dance with a walker. <laughs> That's badass when you can round dance. That's badass when you can rabbit dance. You know, that's badass when you can owl dance. All of those, those courtships. So living Indian, let's talk about that courtship. Courtship, the dancing, you know, those rabbit dances, those, those uh, owl dances, those all, those were courtship dances. Uh, push dance, uh, absalaga crow. There's, there's all kinds of when you're at the, when you're at any kind of Indian doings. There's protocol of courtship, bringing someone over to meet all your relatives. When they bring someone who is not your relative to shake hands, that someone's being courted. And so, you know, open your eyes and, and be good with that. So when you op make sure that you know if you're already taken. Say that you're already taken. It's very, uh, for you men out there, you know, it's good for you to be gallant and announce that you have a wife or that you're in a relationship. So in those first couple of paragraphs, 
where you're not snagging around or grooming or testing, you say you put your wife in your sentence, your partner in your sentence. If you're two spirited and you're of the same gender, you say your partner, you put that in a sentence because you know you let your status. But hey, hey if you're single, <laughs> I'm a. Uh, I guess I'm spoken for because I'm I'm being courted. <laughs> so that means I'm not on the snag snagable. <laughs> and 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 that's there's you know that being uh living Indian is to make sure because if someone is in a vow, if they've made a vow to someone not only t for that love or that romance or that bond, but a vow with a bundle, a vow with a pipe a vow with a rattle, if they have that vow to another person, then don't mess with them. Be their friend. You aren't snagging on them. You know, so this is badass auntie, you know, you can't just go around. Um, in fact, that's a sign of trauma when you're going around trying to snag everybody. That's snag, especially if it involves having um, sex with them. When you do that and you objectify a person, that's not Indian. That's playing with the human being's emotions and you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so remember, and, um, and I don't care what kind of flack I get for that. You shouldn't behave like that because when you're living Indian, you should live honorable and have discipline. I was speaking with, I went to uh, Missing and Murdered um, Healing for Families. And we were speaking about the sacredness of women and the sacredness of, of keeping all of them sacred. And that's, you know, why we have, why we are red, why we have red hands and why we want, we're even right here, um, Leo Wagner has been missing from just right here down by the water. And we've been looking for him and we say prayers. And so I say, it's about to be OP. No gakimoka, no gaspomoka. I ask you to let us find Leo Wagner. Let us find Ashley Loring, heavy runner. Let us find out we have so many relatives that are missing and we have we can't that we can't have a funeral for them so living indian is praying for all of our relatives to ha to be have you know sing the journey song have have a a celebration of their life call it a celebration of life it's not necessarily a funeral or, you know like a a sad thing it's um and, and living indian is um only tell the the good stories of someone don't tell about, you know, the 30 times that they embezzled. <laughs> and I laugh because tell the good things that they did with their job. Tell the good things that they did with their children. Tell the good things that they did. Um, always one of the things of living Indian to get people to behave better is just talk about the good things that they have done. That's living Indian. Well, I had to, I just have to share with you last night, um, after I had come back from Canada and I, um, there's up there, they call it Boxing Day and Boxing Day is just a, a, a it's a British phenomena where you, where you get together as a family and you, you eat all the leftovers and then you, but they, um, consumerism is everything's on sale, 75% off, 50% off, 90% off. Um, and they were even out there selling their unwanted relatives. No. <laughs> anyway, so when um, when I when I came home and I was crossing the border, even at the border, they they used to give Indians a really bad time, and we have to declare everything, and we have to have our passport, and um, that didn't. When I went when I went across the border this time. The non-native out of respect said, Oki, you know, Oki, which means my spirit's really happy to see your spirit. He said, Oki. And then 
he just I told him where I was going to a ceremony to horn social powwow. And then when I was leaving, he said, Kitakito Matsuno. <laughs> this non native. That was his respect. He was trying to be respectable. But I you know, I just want to share that with you. And one of the things in living Indian is do your best if you you know to learn some of your language. <laughs> you know, I like uh I like uh, how Absalaga say Shodaje, you know, um, the, how they say hello and like how they say um, Ikchik. And, and um, I've heard him say, and you know, it's my, my Blackfoot dialect. Ikchikpa means it's really good. Um, that's like Iksagapi is really good. And Northern Cheyennes, they say Piva. And then in teasing, they'll say, ooh, that's really pivorific. <laughs> you know, they'll take, it's kind of like wash day Lakota. And whenever I see Lakotas, I all say wash day Chicago because uh, all the old speakers say that because that was when they first went on relocation to Chicago and they saw the buildings and how beautiful it was. They said wash day Chicago. Uh, we even Moses Lake up here, Moses Lake, uh, part of uh, the reserve up here. They ha they say uh, Chicago, or they'll say Wash Day Moses or Ixagapi Moses Lake. You know, kind of that stuff. So, w with living Indian, is to go through those rites of passage, the rites of passage with when you're born with your umbilical cord, the rites of passage with your placenta. Take your placenta and go through placenta ceremony. Um, have the baby's placenta. Have your own ceremony and just none of this, oh, we don't know how to do it. All you do is talk to creator. It's to bat to be old. Take that placenta and you bury it. A lot of our people are now burying it in Chief Mountain or they're burying it in these mountains. You bury it where all your ancestors came from. So the identity of that baby will never be in question. Jackie Keeler, our placentas are buried here. Lily Gladstone is us. So knock it off. <laughs> you already hurt so many people. So take that, all these rites of passage, this placenta ceremony, you know, to, you bury it, say a prayer, market and you can come to that spot it's just like there's a living indian the cradle boards uh the cradle board has to be made in at least two weeks before that baby is born it has to be made and ready and in that cradle board the willow to protect that child's head when you go harvest it you put up tobacco and you pray for that baby and then you take that willow and you soak it in water. And you soak it in water until it's really pliable. And then you shape it and you let it dry. And that goes in the cradle board. So living Indian is making that cradle board for that baby. And it will always protect its head. Even if it fell off the horse or whatever. The cradle board that will protect it will, will keep it safe. There's many ways. So that cradle board and then when you go with that like um as a goes ahead i i made his cradle board many many years ago with the willow just by my house i always go and i put out tobacco and i pray for him and i pray for his family you always those rites of passage with that cradle board other rites of passage is you know when um your baby has its first um Solid food, you know, besides breast milk. That's a rite of passage. When your baby has um, its first laugh, uh, when your baby has its first, all the firsts, you know, when it takes its first steps, you should have a, st a ceremony. That's why we have all these babies now. You know, for every elder we lost here, we had eight or nine babies. And because we couldn't go anywhere, black feet with black feet, we increased our blood quantum. <laughs> When you can't go nowhere, you have sex with the people that where you are. <laughs> but if you keep going out, going out, going out, going out, it fragments. Go out, going out, and going out, and pretty soon, boom, you don't exist anymore. <laughs> 
because you have went into the melting pot. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to just keep on these living Indian. You know, one of the, um, I just saw uh, there was a young child and he, um, someone gave him um, like a, a dancing stick and a fan and he went out and he was just dancing hard he was trying and then he'd look at the other dancers and then he'd then he'd try a little and then he'd look at the other dancers and he'd try so so writes a passage when you first dance writes a passage when you get your first two feathers those real i've seen some chicken dancers two years old with their writes a passage when they um, get their first shawl. Writes a passage when they get their wor first ribbon skirt. If they sew their ribbon skirt or they get a ribbon skirt, that's a rite of passage. If they get a ribbon shirt, if they get ribbon chaps, if they get ribbon shorts, she, she could even have... <laughs> Just put ribbons on anything. You know, Indians, we have ribbons on everything. Just be flowing, flowing. And <laughs> anyway, these, these rites of passage... So the other rites of passage that we really have to bring back is, is those when we make monumental leaps in our, our maturity. Uh, that's why we had Mosquito Society, Kit Fox Society, and then we go into Brave Dog Society. But just think about with your... Uh, I saw this happen um, at our celebrations in school here. When... When, when a young child gets up and speaks good for the first time, that's the rite of passage. Compliment them. Celebrate it. If they stand up in front of a group and give a report, compliment them. Encourage them. You know, these, these rites of passage. And then when um, that, that first journey, you know, um, for Two-Spirit, when there is a coming out where you aren't hiding who you really, really are. That should be um, a rite of passage coming out. And if you see that your child is non-binary or gender fluid, and they, the you should have a coming out, a coming out celebration for them at that time. Um, when you have a young girl that is just starting her menstrual cycle. And starting where she can have, then you have, she's turning from girl to woman. You have a rite of passage. When a young man, his voice starts to change, you have a rite of passage. When it's real high and then, hello, how are you? <laughs> you know when that happens and you have to go look like this. You know, I have a 12-year-old, well, one of my 12-year-old great nephews is uh 5'10", he's taller than me now, and he's 12. So I just, I always, I said, I, I'm just going to hold you because you're going through a rite of passage right now. And I was just hugging him really hard because we got to have um, Christmas um, Eve. We all had a meal, and I just hugged him really hard. And I told him, you know, I said, you're going through a rite of passage. You're be you're so brilliant. You're becoming a, a an artist, a young man. And I just want you to know, no matter how big of a man you become, you're still my nephew. And I love you. And you're brilliant. And you're smart. And I was like hugging. I was hugging him really hard. And you know what? He was hugging me back. He wasn't like pushing me away. He was leaning into the hug. So there's there you go. Living Indian is you should go and you should hug your relatives. Here we actually go and the elders... The, those old elders, they kiss you on the lips. It's of love and endearment. endearment. It has nothing to do with um, making love. It's love and endearment. But hugging, think about that. And, and if, if you still have, you know, your bruised relatives, you know, they're real stiff. They don't hug. Ask them, say, is it okay if I give you a hug? And you know what? Most of the time they'll say, and just don't, you know, like... That, that kind of fake ass hug <laughs> like like grab them grab them hugging rites of passages when you can go around hugging people that's why when you come into a room our immersion school here then they teach them the language they teach them to go into the room and go around and shake hands with everybody acknowledge everybody and you know indians kind of look at each other and go you know or 
You know, that kind of... But go around, shake their hand. And tell them, it's really good to see you. It's really good to 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 see you in person. Not on Zoom. <laughs> anyway, th these rites of passage. Living Indian... And I have to, some of the humor is like when I came home last, last, uh, from Canada, I, um, I decided to, I had, we had some elk ribs and so I barbecue sauce and I was just all eating it and sparkling water. And I, I turned on the television and there was an old show, 1972, about, uh, the battle at Bighorn. <laughs> And there, and it, it was Iron Eyes Cody, and all these other Italians. They had feathers, and they had medallions, and they had beadwork. But they were Italians, and all the women were Italians. Or they they weren't Indian, and they they put these little bands on them. And that's why that's why today, you know, we're not playing Indian; we're living Indian. And I actually, I I just had to laugh because. Iron Eyes Cody. She she looked pretty good. He was a really good fake ass Indian, <laughs> real good pretend Indian. But the way that they had him dressed up was stereotypical. And what does so in these rites of passage, what we have to do is look at stereotypical. But what have you always been? You know, like I, you know, like I was just thinking, even how um, Gipadakis, grandmas always wear these. Scarves, but these scarves work. I tell you, I don't know what it is. Maybe um, it's not snowing right now, but it's very cold. And when I have this on, it's warm. My ears stay warm. Um, it's not. It's not too bad. And th these gloves, I do have. You know, I have big insulated. I have mucks on. I have um, wool socks. And so another rite of passage is you know when you prepare medicine. You know, all the rites of passage to gathering medicine. One of the medicines that um, my mom and my sister in our family, they always prepare bear fat. And um, so one of the, the bear fat, uh, I always put it on during the pandemic, we would put it on the bottom of our feet and would put cayenne pepper. And if you don't have bear fat, you could use... Over um, when we were in Willits last week, we just used uh, coconut oil. We used, um, you could use olive oil, I guess, or and put the cayenne and you put it in the bottom of your feet. A lot of the medicine goes from the bottom of your feet up your body. And that particular, that cayenne will fortify your lungs. It will heal your lungs. And even before the, the COVID-19 vaccine, people would drop it on the rocks in a sweat. And they would inhale it, um, and they would put that cayenne pepper on the bottom of their feet, and they would it would fortify their lungs. I uh, so th these rites of passage of medicine, you know, omagasis. There's a lot that's a crazy dog medicine. We had to get transfer rights. You have to sing a song to sneak up on it. There's other like around here. There's a lot of willow. There's a lot of I see. There's a lot of. Um, uh, wild strawberry uh, it's dormant and that's the solstice our medicine is is dormant it'll grow again it will come out again but these living indian i'll just say this it's not about getting um fake ass stuff on instagram <laughs> it's about when when you when you learn a medicine say like um these willows right here are, there's, um, up higher, there's elderberry that you could make clappers with. But we'll just keep it simple with this willow. This willow has, um, aspirin in it. You know, if you had a, when, if you had a fever, you actually could chew on, you know, break off some and chew on and the aspirin will bring your fever down. But when you're learning a medicine and you're living Indian, you should at least, Follow that medicine for one year to see when it when it's when it's ripe, when it's ready, when you harvest it, what it looks like. Because you know when I'm done here in a few minutes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna Lulu again because we got this land back for um Scott Pikani. We got land back, fifty three and a half acres. I'm gonna go around here, 
because I always come down here and pray and wish our land could come back and it came back. It makes me so happy. This is the greatest gift. I don't need no goddamn Amazon gifts. I need land back. <laughs> so a year in medicine, living Indian is, you know, um, Wilbur Fish used to always take everyone out here. He'd call it grazing. Like with the strawberry wild plants, there's so much in the strawberry plants. You go out and you follow it a year and you put that tobacco down. Just like when that courtship with medicine, you put that tobacco down and you ask for a relationship. You ask this willow, can I have a relationship with you for the purpose of healing people? Or the purpose of healing and you ask that that strawberry medicine, you put down the, toba the tobacco and you say, can I enter in a relationship with you? Can I always honor you and never dishonor you? And you put that tobacco down. That is living Indian. You know, I was just, uh, there's Minigapi around here. Minigapi means bachelor, but it's, um, I think it's called horseman. That is a, a powerful breathing medicine and a powerful, like if it's better than airborne, <laughs> if, if you put the tobacco down and you ask, ask, can I have enter in a relationship with you? You put the tobacco down, you say your prayers. Even in the water, this water, you know, they said, uh, I was listening to an NPR where 95% of our earth is deep, deep water, you know, in the twilight, way deep. We're water, so putting the tobacco down in water and praying for clean water, that's living Indian. That's why Sharon Day and all of our water walkers, Josephine that passed on, Tinker, all of all of you that are water, look at the sun's coming out. And um, man, that feels good because I, I was a little bit chilly and uh, have, feeling that sun on my face. That's a gift. Let the sun on your face, let Natusi heal you. Let Natusi say your prayers, sing your songs to Natusi the sun. I almost could go somewhere else, but hey, welcome to Wellness Wednesday. <laughs> Power hour. <laughs> I just feel in that sun on my face. But all of the, these rites of passage, think about even, you know, Gaksami, uh, sage. There's 33 different kinds of sage. You know, go out, the male, the female, put out your tobacco, harvest it, give it. You know, uh, I got boxes of, from South Dakota, I got a box of sage. And Muffy and Felipe gave me sage. They also gave me star quilts. Uh, Rosebud gave me a beaded medallion. I mean, you know, there was so much uh, gift giving and that's living Indian. It isn't just one day a year. Give gifts all the time. And, and you know, this shedding or someone, I heard it called purging. If you have 55 pairs of shoes, maybe you should give some of them away. <laughs> no, no. So if you have... 4,000 pairs of earrings. <laughs> maybe you should give some of that away. And maybe if you have all those shawls and all those blankets and all, you know, whatever, give some of that away. You know, it's just uh, like tomorrow is um my next sister. She's the second born. I'm the first born. Um, Kathy Ponch, we call her Big Eyes, her Indian name. She, um, it's her birthday. And so she wants to have um, a brunch, but not, she doesn't want anyone to have to cook. So we're going to go to her favorite restaurant at 10 a.m. And I was just, you know, I was just thinking of a special gift because anyone born around December 25th, you should give them two gifts. Also, all, birthday gifts. So that rite of passage, um, birthday gifts, one of the things living Indian Always tell their birth story. I'll, uh, the 68, I'll, 
I always ask mom to tell me my birth story. And every single time I learn something new. I She talked about Marisha Hall making my first baby quilt. Um, you know, she asked. So one of the gift when you when your children grow up and you know now that we got all this video record it tell them their birth story that's a gift every birthday tell them their birth story where was it where was everyone where were they waiting what happened and you know those of us that grow up in foster care and we might not know that recreate it give them the information that you know where they came from because i tell you when they get older they're going to go out and seek it so you know those of you who maybe gave up children stay in contact and tell them the story those of you who may not have your children and you're getting them back tell them the stories of their birth have a have a rite of passage when you're back together as a family reclaiming renewal reunited reconciliation all those beautiful words have that you know it's just like i love all these stories you know i was thinking about walter lamar well he can tell his own story but he found out he had a brother <laughs> so he went to go meet his brother and you know with this dna so if you find out you got 300 brothers and sisters eh <laughs> that means your dad was busy. <laughs> when someone says they're busy, they have 300 children. Whoa. <laughs> if you have to get the DNA and go find all your 300 brothers and sisters, do it. That's living Indian. You know, <laughs> buy a lot. <laughs> Just like on the 250th um, sister that I meet, I'll just say, thank you, dad. For just your sacred scrotum just squirting all over. <laughs> you know, they say ovaries are sacred. Scrotums are sacred too. Just don't be squirting them all over. You know, <laughs> wrap that rascal. <laughs> anyway, take, let's, uh, that, you know, the, just the humor. And I guess, <laughs> wrap that rascal. We should have a t-shirt. Wrap that rascal so that you don't have 300 children by 200 women eh? <laughs> and then you don't have to pay 300 alimony <laughs> god dang <laughs> anyway that was uh, you know I, I guess for women you know it's sacred nine months you have to carry um, scrotums can just squirt <laughs> women have to carry it for nine months that's why we're called life givers so I guess that's a good way. Remember, that's why we keep women sacred because they are life givers. They're life givers for babies, life givers for ideas, life givers for lateral forgiveness, life givers for lateral kindness, life givers for making homes, life givers for making uh, organizations, they're life givers for missing and murdered, they're life givers for youth projects, they're life givers for stopping domestic violence, they're life givers, they're teachers, all teachers in our school are life givers. That's what you should have a rite of passage for. When you're teaching Indian things and you're teaching Indian culture, you are giving life. You are giving life to a human being. To believe in their self. They even say, you know, the CDC says the greatest resiliency is your cultural identity. So if you're confused, listen to this power hour encouragement. If you're confused, you'll, you'll find out those rites of passage tell you who you are. And the other rites of passage, you know, rites of passage when you don't um, bleed anymore, menopausal male and female rite of passage if you are transgender and you're going through hormonal you should have rite of passage as you take the hormones and you become who you really are you should have celebration in those the rites of passage like right now 
a lot of my um yesterday we lost one of our she was just a delight jackie parsons she was the first to um have a uh promote our museum here uh she always uh promoted quill making she always promoted everything and she she died yesterday she's journeying so when i go around here i want to put out some tobacco that's living indian and i'm gonna thank her for having a good life and i'm gonna thank her for all of uh she god she had a wicked sense of humor for all of the laughs that she gave and she had a son named david and he used uh david was a really and he still is a good singer i haven't heard him sing in a while because he had a sweat and he used to sing with my brother ira and edward and muffet and a little dog but i'm gonna thank jackie parsons for making that son i'm gonna thank her for making her daughters and i'm gonna thank her for making her grandchildren and then her children that aren't even born. And that's, you know, living Indian is that legacy. That legacy. You know, like I, I whatever your ancestors' legacy is, live it today. Your ancestors were fierce. Your ancestors fought. Your ancestors spoke the language. Your ancestors sang the songs. Your ancestors were cordial, civil, and, uh, the, you know, even in their humor, I was telling one of our elders, I said, what a good gathering. Everybody had forgiveness and shaking hands. And he said, yeah, they'll, um, they weren't, um, they shook hands and they'll say, for now, we'll get even later. <laughs> we'll get even later. <laughs> but for now, we're friends. <laughs> I was like, you know, th th that's just the humor is, don't be trying to get even with anybody. Just like let it go. Start new. Let that go. And let it be light. Be forgiving. Lateral forgiveness is living Indian. Lateral forgiving the unforgivable. And there's some, you know, some rough stuff with forgiving the unforgivable. I had to forgive a medicine man for perpetrating me. And I, when I forgave, it was light. A lot of women I work with, they forgive the person that raped them. They heal. They work on their healing, their self-care, their self-love, and taking care of themselves. Taking care of yourself can be one of the most beautiful living Indian. Not playing Indian, but living Indian. Taking care of yourself, so... I'm just looking around and um, I uh, we come to you, Native Wellness Institute. Our mission is to keep the teachings of our ancestors alive. <laughs> and so I, I, I've been here. I, we always keep it positive, productive, and proactive. I'm not pushing up the middle finger. Ah, <laughs> that's not my middle finger. This <laughs> anyway, keep it positive, productive, and proactive. And I just want to wish, you know, you guys are welcome to come to Browning if you want to on the 28th, Heart Butte on the 29th and 30th, and Brockett on uh, January 1, or wherever you're at, cook a good meal. I was thinking about making some chicken soup. That's, that's a rite of passage when you bring soup to someone who maybe isn't feeling so well. Bring, bring stew to someone. Bring them, you know, some nice uh, cornbread, homemade cornbread, some homemade bannock. Bring them uh, banana nut bread. Bring them, oh, I must be, maybe I'm getting hungry, some cream brulee. <laughs> Huckleberry cream brulee. <laughs> anyway, with that, I just, I, well, I, uh, my sister was saying, are you taking off time? Everyone's taking off time again. What does that mean? I always do Wellness Wednesday. I just, wherever I'm at. Because, like, look at, you know, I'm kind of kind of bushy. Don't even have earrings. I'm, but, dang, I still look good. <laughs> Greasy old Indian, I still look good. I'm out here in the wild, and I thought, I could just uh, pull over and do power hour. And, uh, so I pulled my, my snow boots over here. And I'm um, looking at um, that mountain talks to us 
but you got to talk to it in the Indian and in Blackfoot. And you can ask it for things. So, hi, Ostrabatabi. Hi, Oninna. Hi, Napi Natusi. Spomukana, all of those looking at our power hour today. Spomukana, Siksikai, Kainaya, Batsapikani. All of the 574 tribes in the lower 48. 48. Spomukana, all of the First Nations. Spomukana, all the indigenous, the Maori, the Aboriginal. And Spomukana, all the human beings. And we ask special prayer for those in Gaza. We send over our prayers to you that things go back to harmony. We send over our prayers to the children and the women. And so with that, I say, I'll see you next Wednesday.